And then today is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. We'll be here again in California and Yakov. The epistle for the seventh Sunday of Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6. Brethren, I speak a human thing to cause the infirmity of your flesh, <clears throat> whereas you have yielded your members to serve uncleanness and iniquity unto iniquity, so now yield your members to serve justice unto sanctification. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from justice. For the truth, therefore, had you then in those things of which you are now ashamed. For the end of them is death. But now, being made free from sin and become the servants of God, you have your fruit unto sanctification and the end of, of life everlasting. For the wages of sin is death, but the grace of God, life everlasting in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in the Gospel, we're taking that according to St. Matthew, chapter 7. <clears throat> at that time Jesus said to his disciples beware of these false prophets who come to you in clothing of sheep but inwardly they are ravening wolves by their fruits you shall know them do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good, tr every good tree bringeth forth good fruit and the evil tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can an evil tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not forth good fruit shall be cut down and shall be cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doth the will of my Father who is in heaven, he shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. And the Father, the Son, the Ghost, Amen. Famous passage. By the fruits, you shall know them. And so many people analyze this passage and say, where are the fruits? If you're really of God, then God would send you many souls. If really of God, you would have many followers. By the fruits you shall know them. And this is the general rule that most souls follow. But today we consider St. Hilary, St. Hilary of Poitiers, who was one of the great fighters against the heresy of the Arians. He and St. Athanasius were the great bishops condemning the Arian heresy. And at that time in the church, there were so many Arians all over the church. They took over the entire church. Almost every diocese was run by Arian heretical bishops. It was a very similar crisis to our present time. And St. Athanasius would say, they have the churches, but we have the faith. And St. Hilary talks about it, by their fruits you shall know them. What are the fruits? Generally when people consider fruits, they ask, well how many people do you have? How many people are following you? If this was the rule of fruits, it would be very simple. The, ha the holiest and most wonderful place in the universe is hell. <laughs> because hell has more people in it than heaven. And hell and the, and the way of the kingdom of Satan on earth must be the most wonderful kingdom. Because there are countless souls that follow the devil. And they are without number. There are millions and millions of them. So therefore, by the fruits you shall know them. Everyone is following the rock singers. They must be holy. Everyone is following the modern world. It must be wonderful. By the fruits you shall know them. But how many people are following Archbishop Lefebvre? How many people are following true Catholic tradition? How many people are staying with the Catholic faith, even in the Catholic Church? One billion Catholics... By the fruits you shall know them. Where are all the Catholics? They were the Novus Ordo. Or they're outside the church. Or they're not practicing the faith. Surely the Catholic church, which Jesus Christ said he founded, 
and would spread through the entire world must not be the true church because by the fruit you shall know them. And we see a great exodus from the church founded by Jesus Christ. And let's go back 2,000 years. Caiaphas said, we are worried about this man because of his fruits. Behold, the whole world is following him. Caiaphas was very disturbed because the whole world was following Jesus Christ. All the Jews saw him as very popular. They liked his miracles, and they thought he was a great preacher, and they liked what he was doing, and they followed him, and they believed in him. And Caiaphas was worried because of the fruits. Meanwhile, we read the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2. When towards the very beginning of public ministry, all the people believed in Christ. And St. John tells us, and the people believed in him, but he put not his trust in them, for he knew what was in the heart of man. That's what St. John said. The people believed in Jesus Christ, and they followed him, and they liked his miracle. And he liked his bread in the desert. They liked his powerful sermons. And they believed in him. But he put not his trust in them because he knew what was in the heart of man. So what then are fruits? There are fruits that the world considers, and this is the fruit of popularity. And then there are the fruits that St. Hilary speaks of, and this is the fruit of good works. Good works are generally not very popular. They really never have been. And when they are popular, it's only for a brief period. Tom Sawyer was able to get his friends to paint his fence for him once, but he couldn't pull that trick off a second time. So it good can be popular for a brief period, but the popularity never lasts. So what then are fruits? Our Lord says, a man cannot gather figs from thistles. Many people followed Jesus Christ. But what did he tell them? If you are my follower, you will keep my word. Not my popularity, but my word. And Lord Jesus Christ is popular for a long time. But he did not end popular. At the very end of his days, his own disciples abandoned him. And they ran away because they were scandalized. They were scandalized. What are the fruits? The fruits are the good works. The fruits are the following what Christ commanded. And the good tree produces good fruits. The popular tree produces popular fruits. And popular fruits are very fickle. They don't last. We must decide whether we're going to be a good tree or a popular tree. And it is not for us to be popular trees. These trees always are produce wicked fruits. Man does not want to go the hard way. Man does not want to go the true way. And when he gets on the hard path and the true path, it's generally for a very brief time. They tolerated our Lord for three and a half years. He was popular for a little while. But then it was too much. And the same people that loved him and the same people that wanted to make him king they were scandalized in him. And they said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. How did that happen? They believed in him. But our Lord said, he did not put his trust in them because he knew what was in the heart of man. Man is selfish. Man is interested in his own aggrandizement. Man is interested in pleasure. He is interested in good time. He's interested in making it through this life without too many headaches. But what about the fruits that come from a garden? 
in a planted in a world that is arid and dry. This requires hard work. It requires pulling weeds. It requires watering the plants. It requires defending the plants against the attack of bugs and against the attack of animals. It requires continual hard work until the time of the harvest. And then when the harvest comes, there will be a good harvest. When is the harvest? The harvest is at the time of the crucifixion. The harvest is at the time of the struggle. The harvest is the time of the difficulty. That's when the harvest is. Our Lord Jesus Christ walked by many fig trees. But on Monday of Holy Week, it was about time for him to die. He was, going, he was losing his popularity. His friends were turning against him. Judas was about to finish his betrayal. Our Lord Jesus Christ was hungry. And he wanted a fig. But the fig tree was not ready to produce figs. And the gospel tells us because it was not the season of figs. So what does our Lord Jesus Christ say? You must produce fruits, not in the season of figs. You must produce fruits when I want the fruits. And when does our Lord Jesus Christ want the fruits? And what is the test of the fruits? It is the cross. By the fruits you shall know them. Everybody's understanding. Everybody is kind. Everybody is gentle to a rich man that is about to give you a big sum of money. But what about when he says he changed his mind and he's going to throw you in jail instead? What about when there are great difficulties and sickness comes? What about when we are despised and hated? What about when the time that Jesus Christ wants fruits? He was very pleased with St. Mary Magdalene. Because Mary Magdalene understood now is the time to prepare for the burial of our Lord. She didn't even know that he was dying. She did not know that it was the time of fruits. But her heart loved our Lord Jesus Christ. And her heart would not be separated from him. And without even knowing that he, her master was going to die in a day and a half, without even knowing that it was the end of her time with him upon earth, she felt the need to pour out fruits. She felt the need to take the alabaster oil that was given to her, that was worth a year's worth of wages, 300 denarii. William Sheen points out, this ointment was worth 300 denarii. And Judas, who knew the price of everything and the value of nothing, was the one that said it was worth 300 denarii, about 10 times what our Lord is worth. He was worth 30 pieces of silver, but that was worth 300 pieces of silver. And he said, to what purpose is this waste? Now consider the fruits of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are considered waste by the devil. They are considered unwise. What are the fruits of the Holy Gospel? What are the fruits of which our Lord Jesus Christ speaks? By the fruits you shall know them. Now the average man wants the fruit of popularity. The average man wants the fruit of his own self-aggrandizement, of a bigger paycheck. This is the fruit that he wants. But our Lord Jesus Christ has a different set of fruits. These are the fruits of charity in the time of difficulty. Of fidelity in the time of being despised. These are the fruits. Hence, how do you know who is a follower of Christ? And how do you know who is a follower of Satan? Remember, in the very beginning... The people followed John the Baptist, St. John the Baptist. And our Lord said, what went you out into the desert to see? A reed shaken by the wind? That's the first thing he said. Now the fruit of Jesus Christ is not a reed shaken by the wind. The blade of grass stands up and it blows in whatever direction the wind goes. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not a reed shaken by the wind. 
This is one of the signs of the fruit of Satan. Hence we see, and St. Hilary says, these are the false prophets. For when the time comes, they will go to judgment. And St. Hilary was speaking specifically about the Arian bishops. These holy bishops who said the Latin Mass. These holy bishops who said they were more conservative than the other Arians. Who said that Jesus Christ was a true godlike man. But he wasn't fully God. But he was so godlike. And who lived what seemed to be somewhat spiritual lives. But they were false prophets. And their prophecies changed. And their prophecies changed. So that amongst the Arians, there were semi-Arians. Semi-semi-Arians. Semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-Arians. There were Arians of all levels. <coughs> Some were extremely liberal. And believed Jesus Christ was just an ordinary man. Others were extremely conservative. And believed he had so many divine-like characteristics that he wasn't even probably fully human. He was some kind of demagogue. And they argued amongst themselves. And they changed and changed and changed their teaching. They were reed shaken by the wind. Now we see this in the conservative movement today. And we see this in the world today. The Lord said, by the fruit you shall know them. And a reed shaken by the wind is not a fruit of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the wind? It is the doctrine of the world. It is the popular doctrine of the day. And it blows one way today. It blows another way tomorrow. And the reed shakes. And the reed dances. And the reed maneuvers in order to adapt to the wind. And this is the modern theology of the church. It's the modern conservative theology. It's the modern liberal theology. And why is it that they make adjustments? For instance, why does a priest who will not say the new mass? I am not a fan of the Eastern Rite masses. I have a hard time pronouncing their languages, and they use incense differently than us. I don't like their short therables, but before our long therable. But if the Pope told me, you've got to celebrate the Ukrainian mass, you've got to celebrate the Armenian right. You've got to celebrate the Maronite right. I'll say, okay, no problem. I have to brush up on my uh, Eastern languages, and I'll say it. I cannot have an objection if the Pope tells me I have to do it. There's no reason to object, because it is a true and holy right. When a Maronite priest says a Maronite Mass here, it is the same as my Mass. I'm just not a fan of the ceremony. When they have a different Eastern rite of the 23 rites of the church, I don't understand the ceremony in the same way, but I know exactly what's happening. The same crucifixion, the same Jesus Christ dies on the cross. There is no difference in a Mass and a Maronite Mass. My Mass and any of the Eastern rites. The only difference that it is appears on the outside. That is, they've got a different shaped hat. They've got a different shaped chasuble. And they sing us in a different language, but they do exactly the same thing without any difference than what I do. When as a priest of God, I celebrate the true mass. Therefore, if my superior commands me, you will celebrate the Maronite rite. No problem. Furthermore, I will not tell Maronites, you really shouldn't go Latin rite. Maronites attend the Maronite Rite, unless it's impossible. They should not attend the Latin Rite. East should attend the Eastern Rites. They should attend the Latin Rite, unless it's impossible. That's what I say. What about the conservative Novus Ordo priest of the fraternity of St. Peter and the conservative Novus Ordo priest of the Institute of Christ the King and the conservative Novus Ordo priest who says Commission of his bishop. What does he say? That new mass is not really good. I don't like it. I think this mass is much better. If I tell you my mass is better than Maronite mass, the Maronite priest has the right to split my head open. It is better, by the way, just for the record. But the fact is, it's more ancient, right? But it's not really better. It's not better at all. It's the same true sacrifice. But if I say it's better, then I'm telling you there's something wrong with the Maronite Mass. And if it's something wrong with the Maronite Mass, Maronites should not go to it. 
that an old mass is better, the new mass is dangerous. I don't really like it. I think you should only have Latin mass because he is a reed shaken by the wind. Why does he say it's tolerable the Latin mass, the new mass? Why does he say it can be tolerated? Because if he doesn't say it, he loses his job. If he doesn't say it, he's not a pastor anymore. If he doesn't say it, he is out in the streets. And he doesn't want to be out in the streets. What went you out in the desert to see, says the Lord Jesus Christ concerning John the Baptist? A reed shaken by the wind? No. A man clothed in soft garments? No. Those in soft garments are the houses of kings. Everybody wants to live in a house of a king. What are the fruits and what are the works of the followers of our Lord Jesus Christ? These are the fruits that are the same in season and out of season. They're the same whether it's the season of figs or not the season of figs. And the test is, do you have fruits when it's not the season of figs? Do you have fruits when they are our faith? When they are saying it's illegal to be Catholic? When they are saying if you hold the truth you will be cast out of the synagogue? Then do you have fruits at that time? If we have fruits at that time, then we <coughs> the fruits of Christ. <coughs> we are not of the kingdom of God. Then St. Hilary continues. But these false prophets, the conservative Arians, when they die, they will go before our Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall say to them, Depart from me, ye cursed and everlasting fire. And they shall say, But, O Lord, did we not preach in thy name? Did we not do works in thy name? Whenever the priest celebrates a valid mass, he is doing a work in Christ's name. If he does a valid absolution, he's doing a work in Christ's name. Did we not absolve sinners? Did we not celebrate Latin masses? Did we not preach in your name? You took the works unto yourself. St. Hilary points out, they took the works unto themselves. They were allowed to hear confessions in the regular confessional. They were allowed to say mass on the normal altar. Why? Because they tolerated Satan and because they tolerated evil. Therefore, why do they do these things? In order to aggrandize and protect themselves. Hence, they took the works unto themselves. They spoke in the name of Jesus Christ. They said, They said, They said all the right words in the works of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, and in the name of Christ, they preached a false doctrine they preach a doctrine that was a reed shaken by the wind. They took account of the winds, just like St. Peter did. And when they took account of the winds, they sank. The only thing is, when St. Peter said, because he took an account of the winds, <coughs> he called upon the Lord. He does not call upon the Lord. He calls upon the Vatican. He calls upon the bishop. And now there is a time for a priest. Pope Francis is saying, I'm going to shut down the new Latin Mass. There will not be any more exclusive Latin Masses. No priest will be allowed to say the Latin Mass only. He'll have to say the Latin Mass and a new Mass. And the people and the many priests are scandalized. Many priests say, I can't do that. Why not? When I was ordained a priest, I never intended and still never intend to say the Maronite Mass. I never intended and still never intend to say any of the Eastern Rites. But if I am forced to do so, I will do so because they are rites of Christ. I accept. And so it is with the Nova Soto priest who says the Latin Mass. He accepts the new Mass as a rite of Christ, which means he accepts a lie. He accepts a new Mass souls, which is a lie. He accepts the sacrilege of the new mass. He just personally doesn't want to say it. And now Pope you know, just like Pope John Paul II said 
to the fraternity of St. Peter, you say you accept the new Mass? You must come celebrate the new Mass with the bishop on Holy Thursday. Prove it. I want to see you sitting there at that Mass. And a representative of the fraternity of St. Peter must always sit in the name of all the priests at the Novus Ordo, blessing of the holy oils. They all accept it. And now Pope Francis is saying, all right, you say you accept it, but you don't act like it. You say you do, but you don't act like it. Like a man that says he loves his wife, but spends no time with her. Times with a girl. Of your wife. You claim this is a new mass, is a true mass. You claim you accept. It, you sign the papers, you're saying Mass in the New Mass Church, and now I'm going to make you say it. And many priests are now saying, I can do that. Why not? Why not? You accept it? Uh, Pope Francis, let them pass the test. Let them pass the test. So in any case, is to keep our faith and not fall into a trap. And recognize by the fruits you shall know them. What are these fruits? They are the fruits of doing good works, maintaining true faith in the season of the cross. They are not the fruits of popularity. And not the fruits of doing what required to survive rather than to be kicked out of the synagogues. Our Lord said those who will be faithful will be kicked out of the synagogues. We must be faithful. We must bear fruits in season and out of season. And let's pray for the priests of God to be able to bear fruits, persevere in the bearing of fruits, and especially in our times when Pope Francis is doing yet another move of wickedness against our church. And that with priests who, in the Nova Shorto, now tempted that they pass the test and come over to true and full Catholic tradition and not only not celebrate the new Mass, but firmly and openly condemn it and not accept it or tolerate it or work beside it at all. So God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.